Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Week Ahead video with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. And the week ahead we're going to be looking to is Monday the 13th until Friday the 17th of November. And FYI, today's video is been recorded on Thursday the 9th of November and the time is just coming up to 1pm UK time. The structure of the video will be me running, running through the major corporate and economic indicators that are coming out next week. And then at the, towards the end, in the second half of the video, I'll then be discussing um, some of the major markets which could, could be impacted by the data and updates we're having next week. Our corporate calendar, our corporate uh, economic calendar can be found under the Market Impulse tab on the fourth option down. And to be honest, the, on Monday the 13th is a relatively quiet day in terms of economic indicators. We do have the foreign direct investment FDI numbers out from China overnight, but all, all excluding that, it's a relatively quiet day. Tuesday is arguably the busiest day next week. Uh, overnight on Tuesday, we're going to have some economic indicators coming out of China. Uh, we have retail sales, industrial production, and we also have the fixed asset investment. Uh, by and large, the economic indicators that are coming out of China have been fairly, fairly decent in terms of manufacturing, services, and also on the import side. Beijing does hope to achieve a GDP growth of 6.5% in 2017, and, the, and the, at the rate things are going, and given that we're now actually in November, it's looking fairly likely that they're going to achieve that target. Uh, if you are trading high-grade copper or any of the big mining companies such as Rio Tinto, Anglo-American, Glencore, or else... Um, um, Vedanta Resources, for example, keep an eye on, on the Chinese economic indicators because it, because it can add quite a bit of volatility to the market. Later on, uh, on Tuesday morning, we have both uh, German GDP and CPI numbers coming out. Obviously, Germany is by, by far the biggest and most influential country within the European Union and the Eurozone. Uh, so in terms of any kind of alterations to future monetary policy from the ECB, obviously what's going on in Germany is going to play a big role in that. Later on Tuesday morning, we have CPI numbers, inflation numbers coming out from the UK. CPI in the UK is currently running at 3%, 3 and this is obviously quite a headache for the Bank of England, uh, seeing as their target is inflation rate of 2%. And seeing as it is partially brought on by their own decision in August 2016 to cut interest rates, and the decline in interest rates led to a sell-off in the British pound, which then uh, uh, made imports more expensive. A term, no, a term economists refer to as imported inflation. So inflation has been driven by the, the relatively weak pound rather than an increase in demand in the domestic British economy. In the latter half of Tuesday morning, we have the, we have the Eurozone growth figures. Uh, the region as a whole will produce its uh, GDP numbers. And as I mentioned earlier on, the, the German figures are coming out earlier in the session. Turning our attention to Wednesday at half nine on Wednesday, we have the unemployment and earnings figures coming out of the UK. Arguably, the, uh, the earnings figures are probably, are probably the, the more important of the two. Unemployment in the UK is at a multi-decade low, which is obviously great for the economy and something politicians like to boast about. But, British, but the, the rate in, in decline in unemployment hasn't really been matched by a rate of increase in wage growth. Uh, wage growth is, relatively speaking, lagging, the, lagging in comparison to the rate at which jobs are being created or jobs are being filled. And when you have a scenario where unemployment is quite low, but, but, but uh, the actual wage growth isn't overly impressive, British consumers aren't actually going out and spending as much. And as I just mentioned, British consumers are being squeezed already by higher inflation. Later on on Tuesday, later on on um, on the on the on Wednesday, uh, we also have uh, retail sales and consumer price index CPI coming out of the United States. Inflation in the US in the, in, in the US is currently running at 2.2%. Uh, but the core inflation, which strips out the, the anything to do with commodities such as uh, such as such as oil or energy, is lagging behind at 1.7 percent. So it would suggest uh, the, the the gap between the two is more down to the recent uptake in in the price of, of uh, gasoline and also oil. Um, if the Federal Reserve are widely expected to raise rates in December, but what they do in 2018 is what traders are really going to be focusing on. Turning our attention now to Thursday. Uh, we have the CPI numbers coming off from the Eurozone as a whole on Thursday morning. Uh, inflation in the Eurozone is currently 1.5%. It's still well off their 2% target. Uh, the European Central Bank only recently stated they're going to extend their, their bond buying scheme out until the end of 2018. But Mr. Draghi, uh, the president of the European Central Bank, 
um, as he often does, left the door open to additional easing should it be required. And he did even, even point to actually uh, the inflation rate lagging uh, off its uh, 2% target as being one of the reasons for uh, the, the QE being required in the first place. Uh, turning our attention to Friday, um, it's a relatively quiet day. The big one to watch out for in terms of economic indicators on Friday is going to be the Canadian CPI, uh, which, which comes out at half one. And if you trade the dollar car, the dollar loony, that's obviously going to be a big one to watch out for. In terms of corporate data next week, uh, we do have some companies reporting, uh, but the big ones to watch out for from the UK are going to be British Land and Royal Mail, both of which are reporting their, their, their figures on Thursday, the 16th of November. So we discussed some of the economic indicators that are coming out next week. We obviously got data coming from the UK, the Eurozone and the US. Markets which are potentially be impacted by this. I will now take a look at the Euro versus the, the US dollar. If you've tuned into our previous videos, either by myself or Michael, we've often discussed how the, the Euro dollar is in a head and, sho head and shoulders reversal, reversal formation. So we can see here the euro pushed higher versus the US dollar, creating the left shoulder here. Then it pulled, then it pulled back to the reaction low at 116.70, pushed on higher here, took off, the sh took off the height of the shoulder and created the head formation here. Then declined back to the reaction low at 116.70 and has gone on and pushed higher here. And now we've actually dropped back below. We drop back below the reaction, the um, the neckline, as it's called, the two reaction lows at 116.70. And while we remain south of 116.70, the outlook for the euro versus the US dollar is going to be bearish. Levels to watch out for the downside. First protocol could be the 200-day moving average, which comes into in, into play at 112.90, and we could even head down to uh, to to 112 or even south of 112 itself. Turning our attention now to the pound versus the US dollar cable, as is referred to. Cable has been recently has been has been trading a lot of trading in a relatively small range. It hasn't really recovered from the dovish hike by the Bank of England. It's been trading within a relatively small range here, and it's almost like the market is trying to trying to decide which way it's going to go. But if you draw a trend line from the lows of March this year all the way through to, to where we are now, we can see that we're pretty much testing the, the trend line support in this area. And if while we hold above the trend line support, and even if, 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 even if we hold north of the 130 level, the broader bullish trend for the British pound versus the US dollar is likely to, rem to remain in place. Looking at potential moves to the upside, if we do push higher, we could potentially run into resistance in a 133.35 uh, and if you do move south of, of the 130 mark we could be heading back down towards the two day moving average which comes into play at 128.62 uh, any moves in, in sterling can have a big impact on the FTSE 100 seeing as it's actually so internationally focused so even even though in the last few sessions uh, the FTSE 100 has come back a bit from the multi-month highs it's still getting trend line support in around this area here. And while we remain north of that trend line support, the outlook is going to continue to, to be bullish. It's only should we break below, say, this area here, the lows from, from October in around 7,425. Then could we potentially see a pullback back down towards the, the two day moving average at 7,386. Seeing as we have numbers coming out, uh, important numbers coming out from the Eurozone next week, the, uh, the DAX is, is going to be in play. And the DAX has quite a positive one recently. Not too long ago, it was at a record high. And the, the DAX has, has since come off its record high. But, but notice how the DAX managed to actually fill the gap that was created here. So it's not a, it's one, one of the myths about gaps in, in, the, in the financial markets is that gaps are always filled. They're not always filled. They're, they're often filled, but they're not always filled. But it wouldn't be a surprise if I saw the market if the, if the, if the market resumed the, the wider upward trend now that this gap has been filled. So while we remain north of say 13,200 or even 13,095, the wider, more bullish trend for the for the uh, for the DAX is still going to be in place. I'll have a quick look now at the U.S. markets, which are in quite a quite a healthy uh, healthy state. First off, the bad we look at the, is the uh, the Dow Jones. The two charts look, look quite similar. The Dow Jones, uh, after creating re record highs in the, in the week just gone, has ever dipped ever so slightly, but, but pullbacks from record highs is hardly a surprise. 
while we, we remain north of the this this level here, the, one of the lows from late October in at 23,250. While we remain north of that, the outlook is likely to remain uh, still positive for the Dow Jones. And we'll have a quick look at the S&P 500 as well. S&P 500 looks quite similar. It's come off at its record highs. We have seen a bit of profit taking, but seeing as buying on the dips has been a popular strategy by traders over the last number of months, we could see some new buyers enter the fold. So the S this, this is the S&P here. Uh, as you can see, it was in a fairly clear and concise upward trend. Should we see any move to the downside, we may find support in this price here, the November low, which comes into play at 2,565. Or we may even see uh, the market pull back towards 2,560. 2, so the U.S. markets are still looking in quite decent shape, even though we have seen some uh, some some uh, profit taking taking place. That's all for me this week. Thank you for tuning in and have a good week trading.